<laughs> good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are. My name's Andrew Grosset and welcome back to my channel. Before I get started on this week's episode, which I'm actually really, really excited to bring to you, I just need to address something. If you guys have just clocked into this, if you've been brought to it because you're in the process of purchasing a home and this is the first um, segment that you bumped into, please, please, please pause right here, stop right here and go back two weeks and start where we actually start, where, where we start at the beginning and then work your way through. I've done this in, in, in sections and in, in order and in order to get the most out of it really and truly you need to watch the whole thing from cover to cover. It's five weeks and we're going through the five crucial steps in the process of you actually purchasing your, your home and I really 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 wouldn't want you to miss anything. So as a quick recap for those of you that have followed through um, so we talked about mortgage and principal in the first week. We talked about property selection and how to go about that in the second week. This week, we're right in there with the negotiations and we're talking about, we're starting off at a point where we're dropping in offers. As we get into today's episode, I do need to remind you, we are at negotiation stage. We found a property that ticks the boxes for us, enough for us to think, yes, we can make this house our home. We have now contacted said agent and we're in the process of submitting offers to be accepted by the vendor. Now, under, hear the word here, accepted. Both you and the seller are trying to do the same thing. It's to settle at a price that's acceptable to you. They don't want to sell it at a price that's too low. You don't want to purchase it at a price that's too high. The art of negotiation is to bounce the numbers back and forth and back and forth until we get to a point that's agreeable and accepted by both sides. And the reason why I want to highlight that here and now is this is not like buying a loaf of bread in a supermarket or even to an extent um, purchasing a new outfit. You know, you can make offers on the price that you see on the listing. In fact, as a, from a seller's perspective, they're expecting you to, you know? But they're also expecting the whole process to be as respectful as possible. So that means not putting in an offer that you feel is, the objective here is not for you to save as much money as possible. The objective for you, as I said last week, is to purchase the property that you're interested in. And that means coming in at a respectful level, making sure that we aren't paying too much, but also making sure that you're not just simply offending someone that's selling their property for whatever reason they're selling it at, just because you're trying to save a buck. The objective is to purchase the property. Never forget that at any given stage throughout this process. Now, what I would also highlight in here, and it's a strap line stolen from something else, when the fun stops, stop. Now, it's quite likely that in the process of you purchasing this property, you won't be the only interested party, which is going to stimulate what we call a bidding war. So it will be you putting in offers, somebody else putting in offers, and the vendor deciding which one to go with based on a number of circumstances. It's not always just about the offer level, although the offer level is quite crucial here. Remember, it's very easy to negotiate your way into a position that's financially uncomfortable for you. So as I said, when the fun stops, stop. Remember that walking away is always an option. Now, you may be wondering from an agent's perspective, why would I ever put that in? Why would I ever put that in there? And the way I'll answer that is quite simply this. Any old agent will aim to sell a property at the highest possible value. A good agent works for the preservation of the deal. And that means having happy parties on both sides of the fence and a full understanding that we are at the beginning stages of what's gonna be a long and bumpy and quite perilous journey to the point where keys are in your hand. There are several stages to get past. This is just a stage to get past and a good agent will act on, on in the best interest, best interest of both sides and will ensure, as I said to before, that we've got two happy people coming together at a price point that's agreeable to both parties, which means that when we walk forward, we walk forward together with the deal in mind. So, lifting up from that point, we'll get to a point where 
offers have been got bounced back and forth. There's been an agreement between yourself and the seller. We've hit a point, we've found a number that works for both parties. You've put that forward, they've said yes. We've got our verbal handshake in there. We've got deal agreed. That brings you to the end of your negotiation stage. The property is still not yours, but we're a considerable way down the road now to get into that actual point where everybody's delighted to put keys in your hands and everybody's life moves over from one chapter to the next. At this point in time, the next steps occur is that your agent will issue you an offer acceptance letter. Generally speaking, we'll get that out within 24 hours of the deal being agreed. So they will send you a letter that set, confirms the name of the person that you're purchasing from, the purchase price that you've got that you've got it, that you've got it for, um, and that's your written confirmation that right, we've moved past the negotiation stage now, and we are free to move into conveyancing. At that point in time, also there are two other key factors that will be triggered. Number one, your mortgage application will need to be made because now you've got a property that you've put an offer in on that's been accepted on. So there's something that we can actually do a proper mortgage application on for now. So contact your broker or the lender, whichever route you've gone down for your mortgage and principal and enact that bit. They will therefore then arrange an appointment, usually through the estate agent, to um, attend the property and conduct a valuation appointment to ascertain that the property is at the right value um, for the money that you've agreed to pay for it. The other thing you have to do is instruct your solicitor. Once you've done that, then your solicitor, you'll get your name of the solicitor that's handling the case, you'll get the solicitor in firm, and you'll get various different me mo methods of contact for said solicitor. You'll need to supply that over to your agent that's involved in the sale for us to issue what we call a sale of memorandum. Now, a sale of memorandum is basically a notification of sale. It doesn't get sent to you, but it does get sent to both solicitors at the same time informing them of each other's contact details so that they be can begin the conveyancing process. That part is really, really crucial and needs to happen as soon as possible. But once you've got that done, we move into the next stage of things, which is, as I said, conveyancing, which I'm going to cover <laughs> on next week's post. So that's me out for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. Um, I'm really enjoying this and I hope you're finding it useful. Anyway, that's me out for today. Until then, see you in the forwards. Mm -hmm.